Hello there, how are you? Welcome back to How I Did It. Well, it's crunch time. I'm trying to get a bunch of little projects completed to kind of do that preemptive strike. So today I'm doing the brakes on my Jeep. And when I say brakes, I'm talking all four axles. So I started out the day by using my top cider to draw out all of the brake fluid out of my master cylinder here. The reason for that is the Jeep's over 100,000 miles so while I'm changing the pads out I'm gonna just let the brake calipers stay open and basically bench bleed the entire line brake line system on the Jeep so it's 100% fresh fluid in there. With that being said, I'll apologize now that this video did end up being a little bit longer. I did my rear brakes to kind of just get the flow of it and then I came up here to the right front and I'm just basically showing you what I did step by step. Now my Jeep's a 2008 Jeep Wrangler. It's got disc brakes on all four axles. When I started this brake job out this morning, I started on the furthest wheel from the master cylinder. That way, that line's the longest line to have the brake fluid drain free and clear out of it. And that's what all the recommendations call for. So simply, before I jacked up the Jeep, I loosened all my lug nuts. Once I got the lug nuts off, I went ahead and threw the tire underneath the frame but I also left the jack in place and I also put a jack stand in there just on the side of caution. I'm by myself out here at the off-grid barn and <laughs> it would be a pretty bad day for me if something fell on me <laughs> because I failed to use some safety precautions. So, like I said, I put the tire under the frame, went ahead and put a jack stand under there and I left the jack not with full pressure on it, but some pressure on the stand, some pressure on the jack itself. Now, with these brakes, they are such a piece of cake to do. My rotors were in great shape, so I opted to just do a straight change out of the pads. Now, the pads on the rear, oh my goodness gracious, they were in some pretty pitiful shape. I would say I was lucky to have maybe about an eighth of an inch left on my pad. And on the front, you'll see, I had quite a bit more pad. I would say that they were probably two thirds used, so I still had a third of a pad left. But I opted again to try to get this done just because of the shortages and things that you're running into, you'll go to get something at the store and they'll be out of it or it'll be on back order. So I'm just kind of bumping things up, you know. I, instead of staying two months ahead on my dog food, I went to my hurricane mode. So I'm three months ahead. Same thing with the brakes. Instead of waiting to do the front, I just did the front and the rears and now I know that I'm good to go. So loosened up the bleeder valve there and then I used the C-clamp with an old brake pad to push that caliper back in there. Everything looked great. You know, a quick little spritz of where I may have gotten grease or brake fluid on this. And then I just applied my anti-squeak to the surfaces that came in contact with the brake pad. So, uh, or with the, the brake pad housing. So on the brake pads, there's these two little ears. I went ahead and put a little dabble do you on there. If I got a little bit too much on, I pulled it off and actually put it on the little, um, gaps that they set in. Now this view is not as good of a view putting these brake pads in as me doing the driver's side. So you may want to fast forward and just go to the driver's side. It's a little bit better view. It's kind of t 
tough when you're working in such a confined space to get a good camera angle. <laughs> so I did my best. A lot of people were saying, why didn't I show more detail in a lot of my videos? And honestly, I think it's because I'm not a professional videographer. <laughs> no, I don't have a clue. I, but I'm trying to make a conscious effort for those of you that want to use this just kind of like a okay what would be the next step what would be the next step and even like putting this back on see how it's kind of spring-loaded where the bolts gonna go in there and I captured that on this side but when I did the other side videoing it I did not capture that specific um, little hint so Again, I apologize that this is a little bit longer video, but you've got the power of fast forward and it's 15 minutes. I think it's 15 minutes. It's right at 15 minutes. Um, so I think it'll be a very useful 15 minutes. The other thing I'd like to stress when you're doing something like this, only do one wheel at a time. That way, if you get lost at where something is supposed to go you have the other wheel to compare yourself um, your progress to also before you start pulling nuts and bolts out if you have your phone right there just take some photos of what it actually looks like that way you can reference back I know a lot of people they kind of like to do videos and then reference back but it's kind of hard when you're doing something, your hands are all messed up to like pause the, the phone on the video in the right spot where if you have a picture, you can just do a quick swipe and boom, you're good to go. Yes, I know, I should have had gloves on. And believe it or not, I paid $26 for a box of gloves. I about wet myself when I saw the price on them. And then like a dork, I didn't use them. My hands are still stained from doing this. I need to get some WD-40. Um, one of my buddies at uh, the fire department years ago, I was bleaching my fingers one day when he came into the kitchen. He was like, what are you doing? I said, oh, I was doing some work and my nails are all gummed up with oil and stuff. I can't get it out. And he goes, just spray them with WD-40. It'll clean them off in a snap. I went out to the, the um, supply cabinet pulled out a thing of WD-40, sprayed it, wiped it off with a rag, and golly dog, I was totally amazed. So a little great tip for you. When you get done, if you have a bunch of grease kind of embedded in your nails and, and your hands and stuff, just spray them down with some WD-40 and it will pull it right out. Anyway, as you can see here, tightened everything down, lowering the jack back down, not full weight, then I can finish tighten it down using a crisscross pattern and the passenger side is done and then I will be moving on to the very last wheel or axle which is the driver's side and that is because it is closest to the master cylinder and that's the key with it when you are doing what I am doing where you're kind of blench bench bleeding the lines the entire line so you have a 100% change of brake fluid you start at your furthest point from the master cylinder and then work your way up and just that little red bold letters don't forget in between each axle to top that off I know when you're doing your brakes it's a little bit different because you're pushing that caliper in but when you're doing this particular um, maintenance that's one of the big things that you have to make sure you don't let the fluid run all the way down or you end up with air in the line and instead of this being a one-person job you end up having to go find somebody or your kid or whoever and getting them to sit in your vehicle and pump the brakes up while you're underneath there with the wrench all right, pump them up, hold it, open the valve or open the, the bleeder valve. And then anyway, you know the routine. So here's the last axle. Again, 
taking the wheel off, loosening up these two bolts, and before I pull these two bolts out, I loosen up the bleeder valve. It just makes it easier to get that bleeder valve open. It doesn't have to be super far open, just enough to let the fluid slowly, by gravity, bleed out into your pan. And so while it's doing that, you pull out the two bolts that are holding, um, I want to say, the pad housing in place. And again, these these pads had some, some pretty good meat. They were only about, you know, two-thirds used up. So I ended up using the padded part of my channel locks just to uh, pry this housing off. Normally it will just rock right off. Again, with that bleeder valve open, you take one of your old shoes, or it's not a shoe, one of your old pads, and that was just showing you the difference that was left. And you're going to go ahead and just sit that up here on your edge of your caliper, and you're going to use your C-clamp, and you're just going to slowly tighten that down, and with that bleeder valve being open, it will push the old fluid out the back and into the pan. Now, my hands are greasy, and my hands are old, so cranking this thing down took a little bit of time, but it worked great, and again, took my time. I didn't want to tear the boot that was on this caliper, you know, I wanted it just to go nice and simple and smooth. And these pads are pretty cool. They go in almost like a door, so you kind of go in at a diagonal and just pivot them in place. And again, another thing that I did not show on the other side. So I think between the two sides, if you're attempting to tackle disc brakes, most disc brakes, from what I understand, are pretty much this right here. I've done my mom's brakes on her Saturn. I've done them on my little Toyota pickup. I've done them on my 89 Toyota Dolphin RV. I've done them on my son's Volkswagen Golf. His was a little bit trickier on, on the drum, but his discs on the front were just like this. Piece of cake. Again, I'm taking a little bit of the anti-squeal and I'm putting it around the metal edge on this caliper or piston, whatever. It, the, where it will ride on the back of the pad, if you don't put the anti-squeal on there, it can have a tendency to cause you to have brake noise. And then again, this just rocks right back in place and then where the bolt goes in, it's kind of spring-loaded there, so you can just spring it over and slide that in and then put your bolts back in and tighten them down. I know there's probably some type of torque specification. I did it to, while that's tight, I don't want to break off the bolt. It is really this simple. And my motto is, worst case scenario is you have to hire somebody. You know, if you get into this and it's more than you can handle, put it back together and take it to a mechanic. But don't be afraid to try it yourself. And if you guys have some projects out there that are needing to be done, I would suggest that you get on it. I think that we're in for some pretty lean times ahead. I know a lot of people tell me, you don't have to use that brake cleaner, but I kind of like to just hit it. Uh, it. It really does a good job on that grease. Out here at the off-grid barn, I do water collection. And uh, with water being a precious commodity during the winter time, Florida summers, we get tons of rain, but the winter it's a little bit leaner. 
So I would rather just buy one can of this and use it and call it good and save my water for something else. Final step is to put your wheel back on. Again, get everything on there snugged up as much as you can. Lower it down so it has some weight on that tire and then totally tighten it up. I call this my torque to 185 foot pounds because I get on there. <laughs> Alrighty then. It is really that simple for you all to do your own disc brakes. And then just go up front and top off your fluid. Now mind you, I think that's just staining on that master cylinder, but you can see where the fluid is filling up in the picture as I'm topping it off. And there's an arrow on where to stop. Everything 100% brand new, all the way through the lines, all the way to the brakes. Alrighty then, I want to thank you all for stopping by. Have an absolutely wonderful and blessed day. I'll see you next time on How I Did It.